taking the Back to the Future car and turning it into a Carrera slot car. Coming up next. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Monster Hobbies Let's Build It. Today I'm going to show you how to take the Polar Lights Back to the Future car and take this slot car from Carrera, which is a Porsche here, and merge the two cars together so that we get a Carrera slot car that's a DeLorean time machine. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see how I Frankenstein these kits together. Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu and I'll be taking over the build right now for the dock here. I know what I'm doing with this and so does he. So anyway, here we have our Polar Lights Back to the Future 2 time machine. And this is Time Machine Mark II, but really this time machine is actually uh, the one that appeared in the beginning middle and end of Back to the Future 1. So I of course have done a review which is up here in this little link which you guys can take a look at. But today is the day we're actually going to build this. So first off I'm going to pull our body out of here. Of course it's still in this bag here after the review so we'll just take this off this way, bring the body down here. And I also have, of course, this Carrera 125th scale Porsche 911 GT3 RSR. So a friend of mine from Italy sent this out. He wants me to do this conversion, so I'm just going to say a quick hello there. But if you look, I don't know how well this will pick up. <laughs> okay, it's not. But anyway, we have our DeLorean time machine body here and the Porsche itself and if you take a look at it this way you'll see that the wheels pretty much line up more or less perfectly. This video is inspired by another video that my friend in Italy saw where of course the same conversion was done. Um, the only difference is I'm going to be doing it. So what we want to do, let's just set our DeLorean body there is underneath the Carrera car there are four screws. Now you'll need of course the Porsche 911 RT or sorry the Porsche 911 GT3 RSR. Doesn't matter which one it is, doesn't matter if it's this exact car, just as long as it's the same Porsche. What I mean by the same car is of course the markings. So there's four screws in this. So you need your Phillips screwdriver. I'm just gonna undo the four screws because of course this is basically a body swap much like I did with the uh, 57 Ford slot car which uh, maybe I'll put that link up there too. Okay so we're taking out our four screws and now like I was saying in one of the other videos where we started this my Italian friend sent up a couple of metal bodies that he wanted to, to try to use but Metal is a little bit hard to deal with, so I got the plastic body from my friend James up here in Canada. Uh, so, like I was showing in that other video, the Porsche has a rounded nose, and the DeLorean has this square cut-off nose, which of course angular lines in the 80s were, were the style, and now we've got the round kind of lines. So, we'll take the body off here. Now one thing in the other video uh, from the other YouTuber is he's cut the front end off because of course the uh, so like there's our wheels going together more or less right but this whole front end of the Porsche the rounded bit sticks out over top of the DeLorean you can kind of see that the posts there are actually hitting right into here, which of course could be fixed a little bit. But as you can see, there's quite a few areas that basically need to be sawed off. So there is a little depression line right that runs right across here. So I don't know how well you can see that. There we go. See it? Indentation. So I'm going to take my atlas saw and carefully cut right off along here. And I don't think that's going to affect this spring-loaded uh, brush pickup system that Carrera has. Because actually, if you see, there is a little flat area in here and a gap. 
which lines up with that line that goes right across there and there, which is right in front of our front screw hole mountings. So that could be a great big benefit for us, because as you can see, I don't know if the screw hole mountings are going to cause an issue, or if they're going to be able just to tuck neatly in behind in here. I may have to round it out underneath there, just a little bit. There's not really any room because that sunken in grill on the DeLorean is there. So this is going to be a kind of an interesting trick. A little nervous to do this, but anyway. <laughs> um, okay, one thing we could try to do first is unclip these headlights because they seem to be a bit of an issue. So I think uh, what I'm going to need to do is just try to unclip those headlights on um, pause the video and oh wait, maybe they can just twist out. Yeah, there we go. So these just unclip here. There's a wire. It's the orange wires are always your uh, headlights and taillights. So, oh, okay, so we got yellow and green going to the front headlights, and we got orange and white going to the back tail lamps. So Carrera has these nice little little clips here. Wait, let's do this. So we're going to prep the car body first by just undoing your taillights and undo your headlights. Okay, so now this wire here is nicely tucked under, so we'll just roll it out of the wheels. Oh, it's pinched in there. <laughs> it's got a nice little wire harness clip. Which, of course, we can maybe just carefully pull this back. Okay, I got the wire out around there. My uh, camera, it um, has that automatic focus, or not focus, but lens depth when you zoom in. And then it, it'll start going tick, 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 because there's a, a little bit of a mechanism issue in there. Okay, I'm unhooking these wires because head of that plug is a little too big. So there we go. So let's just pull this back in here. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to probably remove this uh, light harness because I think it's going to hit up inside. Okay, so our front headlights, we'll just do a little, did you see if, there we go. You just Pull that little clip back, and then you can slide these straight up and out. So that removes our headlights and taillights. So just set those aside. Take our screws over here too, and set them aside. So don't want to lose those. Okay, I'm going to zoom back here again. Now, with the lights out of the way, just slip the wires here. With those lights out of the way, can I test the body again? Okay, yeah, that that's a bit better because now we're not hooking up. Although uh, those screw mount posts are going to be a pain. Okay, starting to see where we need to cut. Saw this Porsche body here to get it to conform to how the DeLorean See how the, it wraps underneath here? And then the Porsche, of course, I think, let's see. Yeah, the Porsche body comes straight down. You can kind of see it coming straight down like that. Whereas the DeLorean body wraps up and under. So we're going to have to remove some of the meat along the side here on the plastic. Maybe even cutting it straight down like this. Have to see how that goes with the saw the front there. Now I'm not sure on the back though. This is where the tricky part is. Whoops, wrong body. Okay, so 
Yeah, because those mounts are going up into nowhere land in the back. Actually, it looks like all the mounts are going right up through the body, all in the wrong spots. So I don't know if sawing that off in the front is going to help us. Yeah, experimentation time. Okay, so here's our undercarriage for our Porsche. And here's the undercarriage from the kit for the DeLorean, the gray one. So if we go like this, you can pretty much see that the wheels will line up. However, you can also see where we need to cut away on the black and white components. It's almost like the front of this car is behind the mounting pins. So that's going to be interesting. Whereas at the back, um, it's not quite as bad. Along the sides here, there's going to be a bit coming out. So, in order to figure this out, I got my tape measure here. And we can just measure how wide this is here, which looks like approximately six millimeters. Be uh, my best guess. So, six millimeters means at three millimeters, maybe a little under, it's dead center. So, from here, there's a neat little step that's actually four centimeters. So six should put it so that those sides get cut right about there somewhere. And that comes straight down. So luckily the sides won't uh, touch into the middle here with the chip. So we got a pretty good, uh, good thing going that way. Here, these little white bits are actually hot knifed in. So there would have been pegs and then they take the hot uh, soldering iron and touch on top of the pegs to lock in our little um, wire or our, uh, headlight holder clamps. And the scary part is I think, I don't know if, how this is going to work here with these brushes in this thing. Because if it's behind the holes, now we're cutting across here. So, I don't know about that part of it. This is going to be a trick. It won't be easy. <laughs> and, of course, if I saw it off wrong, there's no um, Control-Alt-Delete and grow a new piece out here and, you know, that kind of thing. So, we're going to do the best we can. You know, I'm a bit curious to see what's underneath this digital chip. So, I'm going to actually unscrew it. Seems to be held down in two corners. By these little nice machine screws. Now let's see. There we go. Okay, there is a plug for our pickups. So let's just Try to unplug it. There we go. I'll let that go through there. Okay, so we got this metal rod down here. I was going to try to slip it out to see if I could get the <laughs> the pin the this out of here. Just drop it out. But. Um, yeah, how do you get the rod out of there? That's that's a trick too. <laughs> All right, well maybe I will leave that, but I think for now I'm just going to remove the chip from the entire car just to be on the safe side here. I'm going to set that off to the side. <sighs> okay, lots of interesting stuff going on. Alrighty. Okay, I'm going to mark out the edges here and then come back. Actually, while we're here, let's get rid of these little um, headlight holders. So I'm slipping my knife under there and just give it a little twist. And what it's doing is breaking the hot knife squashes, I don't know what you want to call those, off the teeny pins that were there. And then same in the back. Just give the, there we go. And there. Okay, so there's still the little pins in there. You just don't have the top. 
Um, actually, there's the exhaust pipes back here. Uh, I wonder if... Oh yeah, there little pegs are right there. It's going to be interesting to get into. Huh. Okay. There we go. All right, now I've got some of these sort of distractions out of the way. I think I'll also remove the engine and rear wheels. Look how everything just unscrews here. <laughs> just gotta remember. Okay, these long screws, just so I know, are going back here. have a, an idea. Let's just scrap this chassis and move everything into the proper DeLorean one. And instead of goofing around trying to figure out how this all goes. Oh yeah, but I got that pin to can... Yeah, okay, never mind. Be nice to actually put brand new brushes on here from like a... use a different system instead of that spring-loaded deal. Okay, that walks our motor off. The nice thing about this too is uh, Carrera's stuffed in these um, brass tubes. That's for our stand. The brass tubes is so that you can uh, always have that perfect machine threaded screw in. Actually, while we're here, just so we don't lose screws. These guys are all the same length. Up there. Nope. Okay, so a longer one's in the front. Let's just put all this back in here so I don't lose the mount. Okay, that's mounting plate like a car battery has. Actually, while we're here, we can put these guys back where they're supposed to go, so we know uh, to hold down our chip. Actually, before I do that, take out the front axle. Gee, that's cool. The front axle is its own thing. Gee. Wait a minute. If it wasn't for those brushes. That would be such an easy drop right in there. Chop that off, chop that off. There's just really not much to screw into. <laughs> but at any rate, that would be good. So there's our front bits out of the way. Yeah. Too bad it's not a split bar. So you can pull out both ends this way and that way. And the thing drops out. Push back up in. <laughs> okay. And these screws go back in here for the for the 
front axle, and then I'll put those little screws back in too. So let's just take a break here. Okay, I figured out how to get this off of the car. So there's a metal pin that goes... Oh wait, let me turn it upside down here. Alright, so this was sitting in like this. Like that. And I got the spring out. The spring can only go in one way because on this side you see the little screw to hold the uh, top in. So as you can see this thing is like a long V the brass. So that slips underneath there and goes over top of that screw. Then this goes in through here. A little twist there. Okay, and once the pin is back in, this should give you the bounce. So the pin... Okay, yeah, see, I, it's not quite in line, but anyway. So the pin was just in here, in the hole. So basically it's a bit of a twist and a push. Like I had I pushed it out to one side and pulled it out with uh, my pliers here. So it's just a matter of putting it back in in the same way. People in the factory have to get it in there, so I guess it's not that hard to put the rod back in. So anyway, now I've got all this out of the way, which is actually the correct way to, you know, alter this thing. So I'm putting all this to the side. The magnet was in here. There's a, a little plate. And then there's some things to lower your magnet. And then, of course, the magnet, which is this three-bar thing. Here, let's see. Pretty powerful magnet, actually. <laughs> all right, so I don't want this magnet anywhere near anything that's going to, like, cause big trouble. So I'm going to put it over there. So now we've got our undercarriage, our chassis here, completely free of anything that uh, is going to get in the way of our DeLorean body. Including the wheels. So as you can see, we just have to clear away a bunch of the plastic that's not going to work. And unfortunately, yeah, ah, that front pickup, because I can't I cannot saw this across because I'm going to lose the pickup action, you know? Actually, there's a V-shaped spring that's just in there, which uh, provides the left and right onto this thing. But it I don't think it comes out to the front here. So maybe I could actually saw right carefully off here but again I don't know the tolerances of this thing you know it's so dicey just in that one front bit the back is okay but yes yeah, so even if I cut this down right to its bare edge I think I'm still gonna hit the front of this bumper thing <laughs> yeah yeah this is gonna be a trick <laughs> that is for sure but this first time I'm doing it and again just got to live and learn, really. So let's mark this out on the sides to our body, our undercarriage here, and then I'll start cutting. The next step we need to do is find the dead center of the chassis for our Carrera car here, because we need to cut away the fatness of the outer edges. So instead of trying to cut them off through the top, because there's all these little walls and other weird things in here, what I've done is I've covered this with the green masking tape here, and I think this will be an easier way to do it. So this is just masking tape roughly out here. Um, our most squarest points are in the wheel arches, so I'm just going to take my knife and cut along there. Hopefully not cut my finger. <laughs> cut it out here, here, and here, and here. And same in the back. Okay. Just make some notches in the tape. Ah. And then I'm going to fold these down. And there and there. Okay, so how do we find center on this thing? Well, one way is, of course, to take our little ruler and measure it. I'm going to do this in metric because it makes it easier. Or the other way is to take a Statler compass like this one 
and then you can go from the edge there with the point and just kind of wind this in a bit to what you think is center. I think center is there. So I'm going to make a line down here. Then I'm going to turn the compass over on this edge. Make another line there. Kind of hard to see. But I can see, okay, so we got... Yeah. Now, if you can see, we got a line here and a line here. So we want to get in the center of this line. So the easiest way to do that, of course, is to take our compass, just open it up a little more till it looks like halfway between the lines. Of course, get a little thrown by our lead here, or our graphite, I guess. So we go in there, turn it over again. Now, does my line here go on top of the line I just drew? Seems to do. So we're going to do the same down here. Remember, our wheel arches are the squarest thing we got. Unfortunately, it's kind of a hole right there. Yep, the lead is going on top of the lead. So we got our two marks there. And we can take our clear ruler, connect the two, and then draw a line down here with our pencil. And then that will give us our center line to work with. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken the blue sharpie and made a line down the center. And originally I actually got this off center. I noticed that my mark was over a little bit. <laughs> so that's why I have these arrows here pointing to the edge of the correct line. They of course converge at the front, which is still the same. So there's my line there. This was a little tricky because it actually fell off and the ruler was a long way away. But anyway, so we want that square edge like on our DeLorean undercarriage. So we have to remove the plastic fatness off there. So what I've done is I've taken our Statler compass again, and I've stretched this thing out to be 30 millimeters or three centimeters in length. So what I want to do is take the point end of this and put it on our center line here and just make a mark. Hopefully we can see this better on our pencil there. Maybe come down here somewhere. Whoops. Got to be careful because there's a hole in the center. Make another mark there. You can turn this around too. Okay. Making a mark there. And then making a mark back here. Um, we also have to make a mark toward the front. And marking out back here as well. And then basically what you're doing is you're taking your ruler afterwards and you're grabbing your pencil or Sharpie again. You're going to line up these marks together and then we'll go across like that. Right to the edge. Then this is the part we're going to saw off right there using, I'm going to use my Atlas Super Saw, which is a model train thing. And then I can easily put that in there and start pushing my way all the way through to the edges. And then take a block of sandpaper and just clear up that edge to straighten it out. And basically that should make it so that the Porsche underbody with all its fat bits coming around the edges will become our dead square and smooth DeLorean. So I'm going to cut that off camera and then show you the results. Okay, so here is our body with the sides cut off. The only thing I didn't do was the front right yet because right after I was looking at it and the front of the DeLorean actually is a little bit arrow shaped there. So I didn't want to just come straight out and whatever because we could actually fill in this little bit in here if we saw the shape of our Carrera undercarriage properly. So unfortunately, my Italian friend, there is no going back. I've cut these square. <laughs> so anyway, this may not fit under your Porsche anymore, but I don't think that's much of a matter. Okay, so lining up the wheel wells here, we've got pretty much the same thing going on. So this comes out square. So what you could do is with this sort of suspended there, you could just draw a straight line across here 
and you can see we just have to take off a little off that rounded edge. And then up front, the way I'm thinking of doing this is lining up the wheel arches and then just taking the pencil along here and here and then right across the front. But as you can see, we're going to have to cut away a lot of this front arc bit and we're probably going to be sawing these sort of in half or something weird. So I'm going to try to cut this out and then see how it looks. Wish me luck. Actually, I just figured out the easier way to do this on the back end here. Just again, take your compass and go into the back of the wheel arch here and then wind it until it hits that edge. And then with that, you should be able to go from here and mark it across and then connect the two marks, one from here, one from there, again with your ruler going across and then saw straight off. So what we have here is our two underbodies. Now this is of course the original Back to the Future one that comes with the kit. And this is our modified Carrera chassis, which as you can see is now looking a little more square to this one. Although we still have the angled off edges here. I haven't done the front yet, but we need to make sure that the back fits first. So as you can see, the uh, end panels look about the same length. There is one hang up though, so just move that out of the way. Now here we've got our DeLorean body. So this is the back. I'm going to push the back of the Carrera slot car chassis as far back as I can here. But I've run into a new problem. And that of course is... <laughs> it's a tight fit. That tight fit's not the problem. You can see that our wheel arches are not matching up to the ones on the body. Now the whole problem with that is that the back end of this is so tight in here and it's the angle. It's coming in like this. So what's holding this up? Well, it's our mounting pegs. They are so long that they actually come up to the top. Whoops, or even go through. They, ah, they're coming up. Anyway, they're coming up to the top of our body here. So what I'm going to do is, I don't think these are going to be really necessary. So we need to get to sort of this blade-like thickness here of the original, uh, of the actual one that comes in the kit. So I'm going to saw... I think we might be able to get away with a little bit of a ridge up here. So I'm going to saw these off right across there and then try it into the body. Okay, so I've cut down the height of those posts, but I still think this needs to go right down to the very bottom edge right there. Just like the um, Back to the Future car does. Little problem that this sticks straight out as well, and this is bent up quite a quite a lot as you can see. But still, I do believe that if we saw it right across the back now, it should fit in. Because, like, look, if I can get this tight fitting thing up. I don't know why I can do it so well off camera. <laughs> Typical, right? Is it... Okay. You can see it's still... There's still a gap right in here. And you can still see, even though I cut these down now, it's still hitting across in there, so they have to completely come out in order to get the same snug fit as when you do it with the actual stock one. There's two little bars in the back here that this clicks into. But there, you can see like the wheel arches match up and everything. So again, this has got to be cut right down to the edge, just like this is. And now we've really gone beyond warranty on this undercarriage, so just so you know. <laughs> so now we have our chassis pan cut to the right shape, except in the front. I'm still working on the front. But there's our sides, and I've cut down the back to give it that flat edge look right there, just like our plastic piece here. And overall, in the back end here, oops, okay, 
the back end will click into those two little pegs back there. So now everything is looking good in a way. There's our axle thing lining up in the whole deal. However, I noticed after experimenting a little bit, we have a kind of problem that's coming up and it's not a very nice one. So here's our motor in the back end going in. Just give it a couple of turns with the screwdriver. Okay, so we got that, right? Now here's the whole problem. If you look, you can see that these tires and wheels are far bigger than actual DeLorean ones. that came with the kit and we're hitting up in the whole wheel arch. So what I'm going to need to do is get my Dremel motor tool out with the proper sanding blade on here. And unfortunately, based on the size of these tires, I'm going to have to take that Dremel and zip down this wheel arch opening until I can drop these tires in there. And I was looking at that other guy's video and I noticed that he's got the DeLorean coming up here and his back end is sticking straight out. And unfortunately, I don't think I can actually... That nice engineering I did on the back, I don't think I can swing this in and lock it in without grinding the car almost up to here. To that line there. So this is where it gets a bit dicey with these slot car conversion things. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to do it, but I think where I'll start is by zipping open these wheel arches. And well, I'll show you the difference in tires here. So Hang just on. to show you the difference here, there's our slot car tires. Here's our DeLorean tires. Now, so there's our radius of our regular DeLorean tires on the outside. And here's the slot car tires. And you can see there's like a lot. It's like almost two millimeters off each end. Just the size of these things. And I don't know, let's just compare this. Like even the back tires, even the front tires, which are supposed to be smaller, are still quite a bit bigger compared to that. So like I say, I need that Dremel in there and I need to go zzz, 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 until this opening is the size of these tires, and I'm afraid I'm actually going to lose this entire uh, wheel arch here. And that comes out. It's flared. So we might be looking at a DeLorean that's actually flat on the sides just to get around these big, meaty, crazy Carrera tires. And again, like I say in the guy's video, I think if you look, you can actually see that he's cut a piece out here to clear the tires. But of course, I'm going to be a little more professional than that. So, hmm, I'll try to zip it with the Dremel and see if I can't get the tires in there. So here we are back again after a little bit of Dremel fun. And I'm also looking ahead at some of these other parts, trying to figure out how it all goes. So I took the Dremel and I ground out in here. But interestingly enough, there's enough wheel flare on here, just so we know it's still there, which was kind of nice. I didn't like completely grind it flush to the body or anything. Uh, now, as you can see, if we spread this out a little, the gap up here is really tight. Like I've got it hitting right on the body, <laughs> or the body hitting right on the tires, I should say. And I still have this little bit of a gap in here along the bottom. So there's no way this car is going to operate like this, and it would be nice, of course, to get this right up flush in here, but that also means that this would really be cut up into here, and there would be no flare because this tire has to move that distance, which is probably about two millimeters, three millimeters. Three millimeters coming up would cut this right off. So instead of that, I was examining the model quite a bit, and of course, I still need these wheel arches opened up, so I haven't gone wrong there. However, what I'm thinking is, I'm trying to remember how other slot cars are put together. The Carrera ones use screws going in here, but in the old days, sometimes they drill a hole in here and put a screw going in this way. But 
they're doing it on brass chassis and that sort of thing. So what I noticed here, if I pop the body shell off, or the chassis off, there is a really thick ridge right along here. My finger is. Now I could scrape all the plating off of this and hit plastic again like I did in the wheel arches. And then what I can do is get a strip of evergreen styrene, uh, potentially a thick one, and what will happen is, like on the undercarriage here, there's this ledge, right? So you can see it in there. So what the styrene strip would do is I can bring it down a little bit so it's sticking out kind of like how the rod is here right now. Then that, because it's on the inside here, so it's sort of sitting in, I don't know, whatever the shape is, kind of, you know, <laughs> sort of thing. So what will happen is it'll grip and it'll click in right about there with that strip of plastic coming down in here to fill up this gap here and keep the distance at the right thing for the back wheels to be able to spin around freely, you know, as they should on the slot car track. Now I'm going to have to paint that plastic black so that it hides the gap because, you know, the door jams. Well, on the real car, I guess you'd be up a little bit, but on the Carrera slot car, because this body is completely flat under here, the Carrera does this with the wheels stuffed up and the, you know, frame dropped down and all that, so that the magnets can contact the track, so the car doesn't go flying off when you go around a corner. Oh, something locked in there. Okay. So now if this was a conventional car, these wheels would be down and this would be, the chassis pan would be sitting up in the air, sort of like this way, you know, on the thing. Not that far, but you know what I'm saying. But you can't do that because again, like the pan, right? That's why it's all tapered in here to get this flat to, against the track and bent up here to get all this flat into the track. So that's how Carrera builds these things. So we've got to sort of go in between the middle. So we need our chassis pan dropped to the ground. This piece that's sticking way out in outer space, I think I might be able to cut it behind those holes. And then that would, uh, you know, get these tabs sort of, uh, like, how do you describe that? The tabs would be in front of this thing instead of this thing going over top of the tabs like it is currently. You know what I mean? So we're talking about chopping it right behind there all the way through. Now, again, I can glue a piece of uh, black plastic or plastic painted black up in behind here to hide the details in there. But one thing I noticed at the front end is the lightning bumper. Lightning bumper will go into those holes there. And what I can do is because this thing here is where the slot guide goes into, right? We don't really want to be hacking this to pieces and all the rest. What I can do is maybe cut these mounting screws out, because they might not do anything. But I can cut out this here along where that grill is. Because when this drops in, this piece here will touch the bottom of the bumper and it'll be semi-hidden by the electro bumper. Do you know what I'm saying? So you'll see this is black under here. It can still come out. Maybe it might get cut back a little bit, you know, like across that line and, you know, square with this edge. But it might be enough just to sort of get these two to kind of match up as close as I can. Yeah, and then maybe where that styrene is coming in off here, whoops, along the side rails, I can drill some new screw holes into there and there, there and there, and lock that into that styrene. I don't know, it's going to be a trick. Like I say, all this is trial and error. And hopefully I'm not leading you guys to error. Now here's another part of this. This pan up here is, of course, all our time circuits and stuff for the back of the vehicle. But then, as you notice, it drops all the way down. You get your floors and all that. That's for the snap kit. However, with our chassis here, we're going to be putting back the digital chip and all that stuff. So all that's going to be 
crunching up into here, which it won't work. So the other thing is I'm going to need to saw this off probably right across here. And then take that, you know, the firewall, which is here. Oops, picked up a piece of tape along the way. The flux capacitor there. I'm going to have to glue that to the back and then just use this piece and forget the interior. And there is an old slot car guy's trick. What you do is with the glass, you leave the clear side out, right? And you turn the glass over and you paint it all inside gloss black. One, two, three on the windows. Then our firewall is going to be popped up into here. Actually, it almost looks like it's got tabs for it. That part's going to be up in there. So you won't be able to see inside where you're going to see all the chips and everything like in the other guy's video. You can see clearly through the window the guy's digital chip. But if I paint out the glass black on the inside, it will look, you know, correct, like big tinted windows. Um, you won't see the flex capacitor and the dashboard and the clock and all the rest of the cool stuff that's in here. But really, with the Back to the Future car, you really want to see all the stuff that's in the back here. And, of course, our lightning bumpers and all this stuff. So, it should work out. It's just going to be one of those things where, you know, it's all trial and error. However, the one good part about all this trial and error stuff is that I still have my Italian friend's metal bodies. So what I can do with this is, in fact, make him up the metal body car, you know, with the interior and all that stuff, and then give him this as a slot car as well. So then he's actually got two full-out DeLoreans, one of them, of course, being a display model that's correctly done, and, of course, the other being the plastic model or the the slot car ready for his career track